Hey everyone, how's it going? Welcome back to the channel. Dylan here. We have a massive bombshell of a video today about Judge Engeron and the civil fraud case going on between Donald J. Trump and New York Attorney General Letitia James. All right, before we dive in, we are going to pray and read the Bible because God comes first. Amen. Comment amen down below if you believe that, that God comes first. I wanted to read two short Bible verses today, and then we'll get on with the update. Because, like I said, God comes first, but also don't underestimate the power of prayer, right? Prayer can move mountains. Prayer can change people's hearts. And maybe that's just what we need right now, especially as we head into this deadline uh, of what's taking place within the coming hours where Trump's assets could start be being seized by Letitia James. Letitia James could start taking away Trump's, not only his buildings, his planes, also freeze Donald Trump's bank accounts, which makes me furious because this is America, all right? And Donald Trump has done more good for not only America, but more even specifically New York than Letitia James would ever dream of being able to do. Anyways, before I get started, let's read the Bible, then we'll jump in. This is Ephesians 2, 8 through 10. For by grace you have been saved through faith. And this is not your own doing. It is the gift of God, not a result of works, so that no one may boast, for we are his works workmanship created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. Amen. I love that Bible reading because it's talking about how this is, you have all been saved through faith, but this is not because of you. This is because this is God's gift. All right. And the second Bible reading is, but he said to me, my grace is sufficient for you. For my power is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, I will boast all the more gladly about my weaknesses so that Christ's power may rest on me. Amen. That's 2 Corinthians 12, 9, which I love that one because, hey, we are all human. None of us are perfect. You watching this video, you've made mistakes. I've made mistakes. You know, we are all struggling. We all have problems in our life. That's one thing that does unite us. You were united in love, but we're also united in the struggles we go through, the crosses that we bear, right? And Donald J. Trump, quite literally, I think he's going through something spiritual right now. I think this, you know, God has chosen certain leaders to rise up. I mean, it literally says that in the Bible. I don't need to convince you of that. I mean, it's not me talking. This is just God talking. But it says, my power is made perfect in weakness. What, what, what else is the most weak thing you could do than somebody literally taking away from you your bank access, your access to your, your goods, your, your buildings, I mean, your properties. This is America. You think, oh, this is where we have freedom. Well, what happens when somebody accuses you of doing something wrong that the bank set, that the New York Attorney General, this liberal Trump-hating woman, comes and says, oh, I'm going to take Trump down, vote for me, you know, I'm going to take down this president, I'm going to take down this man, you know, uh, we're going to fight to stop Trumpism, and blah, 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 and, you know, oh, he defrauded the banks, and the banks were like, well, we're, you know, we're not victims, we're happy, yet, the, what is a, what does an attorney general typically do? An attorney general typically is there to protect citizens, and those entities who cannot protect themselves. Well, the bank said, well, we did protect ourselves. We did our own due diligence on Trump's properties and Trump was one of our fantastic trophy clients. And now New York Attorney General is accusing, uh, Letitia James is accusing Trump of this and now they're gonna start seizing his assets if he's not gonna put up 450 million bucks. It's a joke. All right, let's jump right into the news and right into Trump exposing the truth about Judge Engeron. And I have a special video I'm going to play for you guys where somebody actually, well, his name's uh, O'Keefe, went into the gym 
and said Judge Engeron is a creep. He went actually kind of went undercover to talk to Judge Engeron, and Judge Engeron also shared uh, shirtless photos to his um, newsletter, and we're gonna dive into that as well because Donald Trump shared that, um, and it's uh, quite quite weird. Okay, so there's a lot of things wrong with Judge Engeron, but we're gonna we're gonna start exposing the truth, all right? And we ain't holding back, all right? This is what you get, Judge. This is what you get. All right, so firstly, this is Donald J. Trump letting loose on Letitia James and Judge Engeron. And this is him just exposing the truth. Let's tune in, let's watch. Well, thank you very much. It's a very sad day for, in my opinion, the country. A New York State judge just ruled that he's crooked as you can get. And a lot of people expected something like this, but not for the amount. Uh, but this is a very dishonest man. This is a man that's been overturned already on this case four times. But a crooked New York State judge just ruled that I have to pay a fine of $355 million for having built a perfect company. Uh, great cash, great buildings, great everything. It affects New York. It's mostly talking about New York, where we have a totally corrupt attorney general. She campaigned on the fact that I will get Trump, I will get Trump. Everybody's seen it. Letitia James, they've all seen it. Well, we'll be appealing, but more important than that, this is Russia, this is China. Sorry, I have to skip through this part, but let's keep watching. See it before you see it in third world countries, banana republics, but you don't see it here. So, I just want to say this. You build a great company, there was no fraud. The banks all got their money, 100%. They love Trump, they testified that Trump is great, great. They even testified in the court saying that Trump is great. And guess what, they even charged Trump interest on those loans and Trump, so they made money off of Trump because Trump never was late on his payments. A customer, one of our best customers, they testified beautifully and the judge knows that, he's just a corrupt person. And we knew that from the beginning. We knew it right from the beginning because he wouldn't give it to the commercial division. This judge thought Mar-a-Lago is worth $18 million and it's worth anywhere from 50 to 100 times that amount. Yeah, I mean, you could literally go and look in Palm Beach if you want to go buy a plot of land that's like a tenth of the size of Mar-a-Lago with no building on it. It's like $50 million. I realized that. He ruled against me before he even got the case. He ruled against me. He said I was guilty. He didn't know what I was guilty of. Crazy. Before he even got the case. And Letitia James, that's another case altogether. She's a horribly corrupt attorney general. And by the way, I paid approximately $300 million in taxes as the migrants come in and they take over New York. I paid over this period of years over $300 million in taxes. New York is officially being ruined by the migrant surge going in. Now they're driving out Trump. They're driving out other businesses as well. People don't want to invest in New York. New York was once it was such a beautiful, beautiful place. And now it's like a third world country over there. I would never go to New York anymore. And, they want and I've been to New York. I've been to Manhattan. I've been to New York several times. I used to love it, and now I would never go back. Me out. Oh, let's see if we can get them out. These are radical left Democrats. They're lunatics. Uh, will appeal. Will be successful. I think because, frankly, if we're not successful, New York State is gone. People are moving out of New York State, and because of this, they're going to move out at a much faster rate. They use the statute. It's a consumer fraud statute that's never been used for a thing like this before. They used it on me because I'm running for president. I'm beating Biden by a lot. We're beating not only the Republicans, we're beating Biden by a lot. The poll came out today, we're up 20 points on Biden. If Whoa, so there's polls coming out. Trump is doing really well against Biden, guys. I mean, keep in mind, we're November's right around the corner. It's right around the corner. Are you gonna go out and vote? If I weren't running, none of this stuff would have ever happened. None of these lawsuits would have ever happened. Nothing would, I would have had a nice life, but I enjoy this life for a different reason. We're going to make America great again. These are corrupt people. These are people. Trump has a fair point. I mean, if he what if he just kind of, I mean, he, he could just be out relaxing in Palm Beach. I mean, Palm Beach is a beautiful area, playing golf, eating lobster every day, but he wants to save America. Trump says this is our last chance. Shouldn't be allowed to do the things they do. And they're using this as weaponization against 
a political opponent who's up a lot in the polls and always will be because I'm competing with a man who can't put two sentences together, who doesn't know what he's doing. And we're heading into a third world war because of this guy. Yeah, Joe Biden's like, ah, hey, hey, I'm, I'm Joe Biden. Ah. Right. We have to win this election. They're doing everything possible to step in a way, but we're not going to stand for it. So thank you very much. We will get back to work. Uh, it's a ridiculous award. This is a fine of $355 million for doing a perfect job, for having paid back a loan with no defaults, with no problems. The banks were totally, t you know, at the trial, they testified. We had an expert witness from the Stern School at NYU that made a statement. He, and I was very honored by his statement. He's one of the most respected people anywhere in the country for yeah. doing this kind of thing, expert wisdom. He said, this is one of the greatest financial statements I have ever witnessed before. Wow. Talk about even the detail. So my numbers actually were extremely conservative. They saw this. So what the judge did is he brought down certain values like Mar-a-Lago, made it ridiculous. But the expert, after having all of this, Testifies one of the best financial statements he's ever seen, and I was honored by that. But I also knew we have a corrupt judge. He's not a respected man. And again, I said before, he's been overturned in this case by the appellate division four times already. It's wow. Amazing. Nobody's ever been overturned on one case four times. And I think very importantly, and I think ultimately the most important, we've employed tens of thousands of people in New York and we pay taxes like few other people have ever paid in New York, and they don't care about that. They, it's, a, it's a state that's going bust. It's a state that's going bust because everybody's leaving, and it's all headed up by Biden, who's destroying our country. So this is Russia, this is... Ch crazy, crazy, guys. I mean, Donald J. Trump, I mean, he is correct. Like, I honestly do agree with him where... I mean, you take a look at him. I mean, he's doing so well. And look at how bad Joe Biden looks. Joe Biden doesn't even answer the questions that the reporters ask him. Look how horrible Joe Biden looks. Dude needs to head, head into the retirement center. He's trying to jog. I'm surprised he didn't fall on his face. Hey, 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 where's my ice cream? Look at him. He looks like he's... I'm really not trying to be offensive, but he looks like he's in one of those zombie movies. Like, he looks like he could play a zombie. I would not put it past him whether he, you know, like, he's a zombie lookalike. Look at his face. Then the reporters ask him questions, he just keeps walking. I mean, this dude, you could just tell. He doesn't look fit to be the next president for four more years? Are you joking me? How disgusting. And now here's Alina Haba exposing the truth about the judge. Let's tune in. So let's be clear about why the judge said that. The judge doesn't like when President Trump explains what actually happened because it's not good for his narrative. This is a judge who clearly has an issue. You've seen his behavior with me. You've seen his behavior uh, with the president today. He has a clear issue with facts that are not good for the case because he already predetermined that I want everyone to understand. This is, the, yes, we do not have a jury. Yes, we do not have a lot of things that we should because they brought it under section 6312. But this judge decided this case and liability before we walked up those stairs. How does that even make sense? How is this judge able to even do that? It makes no sense. I didn't have a shot. So right now we're sitting here doing a whole dance and the only thing they want are facts that are bad for Trump. That's why he's silencing him. That's why he's telling him short answers. And that's why he's clearly enraged. His face is red. He, is, he came in hot and he doesn't know how to handle him. Crazy. The judge is, I don't understand it, my friends. I just don't. If my client was worried about people's penalties on him, and that's supposed to silence his right to free speech and his right to take a stand and explain, then I wouldn't want to represent him. My client's done nothing wrong. His answer should be full, and if they try and silence him, the record will reflect that and we'll deal with it on appeal. Alina Hobbit just said Trump's done nothing wrong. What do you guys think? Anything else? 
love this woman. She goes, anything else? Everything is done strategically. I can't get into that. But the truth of the matter is, the fix was done in the EUO, which is a special proceeding. Once they brought the case, we decided it was better to fight the facts. But uh, frankly, I never thought that she would break the case because once you see what his actual values are, you see that there's no there there. But, you know, she gets a lot of attention from this. You all are sitting out here. She comes out. She calls him a liar. I mean, this is, this is third world stuff. You're not allowed to run before you even know what somebody's company is, before you even know what their financials are, and call someone a liar and call them a fraud and base your politics on this. Miss James would not be the attorney general but for President Trump. Yeah, she literally ran saying, I'm going to bring Trump down. Now, I wanted to share this. Uh, Fox News brought on a legal expert to predict the outcome because the bond is due tomorrow or today by the time you're watching this video because I'm about to upload it, but it's by the time I'm filming this, it's already midnight in New York, so let's tune in. Has until tomorrow to pay $454 million bond in his new civil fraud case. If he misses the deadline, State Attorney General Letitia James can freeze his bank accounts and begin proceedings to seize his assets as the former president threatens to take this all the way to the Supreme Court. Good. But Look at all of these properties that Trump has in New York. Trump Tower, Trump Park Ave, 1290 Avenue of the Americas. Never even heard of that one. 40 Wall Street, Trump National Golf Club, Seven Springs, never heard of that one either. But yeah, I mean, Trump's built these beautiful, beautiful properties for New York. And like he said, he's employed, you know, thousands of workers paid, you know, millions of dollars in taxes really helped the state of New York and this is what he gets in return. What a joke! And if they start seizing these, that's really gonna piss a lot of people off, guys. And it could be happening within the next 12 hours. Will that work? Former Supreme Court clerk, Chris, Chris Landau, joins us now. Great to have you, Chris. Thanks for joining us. Good morning, Charlie. Good morning. So uh, tell, tell me, uh, you know, I, I understand how all this sort of is, has been playing out politically, but how does this work? How is this going to work? Uh, what, what is this going to look like tomorrow? Tomorrow's going to be an interesting day. The uh, deadline for posting the bond will... Guys, if you're not subscribed to my channel, subscribe now because I will be making another update. On ...tomorrow, and that means unless the president posts the bond the uh, attorney general can start seizing his property. So it's going to be a cliffhanger whether or not the president's able to post a bond with some of this new money that he has, or the New York courts might step in and say that the bond requirement is excessive and stay the judgment uh, pending the appeal. With Please say a prayer that another ju a court steps in and says that this is ridiculous. I really hope, you know, I do trust I want to trust, I want to trust that here in America, you know, the truth will come out and justice will be served. I really hope that it does actually come out in this way for Donald Trump's favor. Without the full bond. So, so, would that, so, so that could, we could see that happening within the New York, uh, the, the, the New York courts. It wouldn't necessarily have to go to the Supreme Court to first see that uh, some intervention where somebody says, okay, stop this, this is insane. Correct. That could be really good news for Trump. So there, Trump does have a good chance there too. I mean, the, 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 there's two tracks right now. There's the underlying appeal. That, it seems to me, has a good chance or a decent chance of getting up to the U.S. Supreme Court. Okay, that's good on, news. You know, his challenge to the underlying judgment against him. But then there's this preliminary skirmish over the bond, which would uh, prevent, if he posts the bond, that would prevent the attorney general from already executing on the judgment while the appeal is pending. I think this surprises a lot of people. They think that she can't uh, move to execute a judgment while the legal process, the appeal is going forward. That's not correct. Uh, as, as soon as the trial court enters the judgment, even if you're gonna take an appeal, the, the successful party, uh, the, the holder of that judgment can start already executing on properties notwithstanding the appeal. Of course, if the if the uh, appellant wins, then they have to give back the money. Uh, but of course, in Trump's situation, it's very difficult to come up with the money in advance to cover the appeal bond. And I think- It seems outrageous. I've never heard of somebody having to put up 
over $450 million at a lower level court. It would be one thing if it was like the Supreme Court, but no, this is a lower level. Trump wants to take it to a higher court, and then he would take it to the Supreme Court. So this is stage one of three, my friends. And Trump has to put up all this money or else Letitia James, this Democrat, liberal, Trump-hating woman, gets to seize Trump's assets? What a joke! I think that's where they want to have him to try to take away all his cash. I'm Steve Juicy. I'm what a wild turn of events taking place right now, my friends. Yeah, Trump faces a Monday deadline to post this or face seizure of assets. This is wild. President Trump faces a massive legal and financial deadline tomorrow when he either has to post a half billion dollar bond following a judgment he and his company committed civil fraud or face the prospect of New York Attorney General Letitia James seizing his properties as collateral. Joining us now is Chief- Gosh, I bet she's gonna like, if she does get to seize his assets, she's gonna probably post selfies in front of Trump Tower and be like, Hey, 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 can't come in now, Trump. I mean, this is wild, and Trump's, at the same time, trying to do a campaign to run for president. And he has to deal with this bologna this whole time, this baloney. ...and campaign correspondent Robert Costa. What a massive joke. Now, I wanted to uh, really dive into this video where this guy actually exposed the truth. Well, it's not just a guy, but his name is James O'Keefe, if you know who this is. Judge Engeron is a creep. Thanks, O'Keefe, for doing what you do. James O'Keefe said this. Judge Arthur Engeron tells James O'Keefe, by the way, James O'Keefe, he's a guy, he's like a journalist. He's a conservative kind of like investigator almost where he does these like crazy wild stories. Um, and, and he's like kind of like a secret journalist too. Yeah, he went on and, and it, with a hidden camera inside Judge Engeron's gym. He's, uh, the judge told... O'Keefe that he gets, quote, a lot of hate mail, but he's strong. An insider where the judge works out at Equinox in Great Neck, New York, also recorded Judge Engeron, quote, creeping girls out. Sources say Engeron does this every visit each morning. This video shows a woman using a machine clearly annoyed and gesturing with her hands for him to, quote, back off. Yeah, so apparently the judge is like a creeper. Have you guys heard about this? I mean, how is this man qualified to be in charge of the Trump Organization's, you know, fate. I mean, this is what kind of real estate background does the judge have? He used to be a taxi driver. Then he used to play piano in a bar. And now he's apparently a creep at a, in a gym. Um, a gym member and supporter of OMG responded to a piece question inside the gym. What time does the judge get here? So answering 5.30 a.m. So this is at Equinox, and actually the, the guy was banned from the gym after doing this. No surprise there. Um, it's a very luxury gym. It's like this gym membership's like 400 bucks a month or something. So this is the guy. So this is the guy going in. Oh gosh, they're playing music. I can't play this on my show. Plus about our sources. But yeah, here's the judge. And here we go. This is him going up. Oh, he, this is apparently him creeping out the girl. Watch this. Hey, Judge Engeron goes to my gym. I have a video of him creeping girls out. He does this every visit so I can get more. Yeah, apparently this somebody was just recording him secretly because it, he thought it was like weird. Uh, but watch this. Damages barring him from running businesses in New York City for three years. Once Here we go. Once even sent us a video saying that Arthur Engeron creeps girls out in an Equinox gym in Long Island. At the end of the clip, the woman is visibly annoyed. By this looks like a very young woman, by the way. They blurred his, her face out, but she looks very young. And obviously, Judge Engeron is a pretty old man. It, she looks uncomfortable. ...by the judge and tells him to back off, gesturing with her hands. Whoa. Other sources confirmed the Equinox he works out in at 5 a.m. is in Great Neck, New York. So we decided to work out alongside him. Oh. He doesn't even know that James O'Keefe is going up to him. Dude, if you're a liberal judge, you should, 
You should know who James O'Keefe is. He goes, huge fan, thank you for what you did. For what? He's laughing. Laughing. He said, gotta get these MAGA people out of New York State. The judge goes, thank you, thank you. Like, like he's, uh, you know, taking pride in getting Trump out of there. I was wearing the OMG t-shirt which said O'Keefe Media Group, but the judge didn't know who I was. My day job, I work in publishing. Don't let the bastards get you down, he says. I'm strong, Judge Arthur Engeron says. Yeah, this guy basically got banned from doing this, but very interesting video. Wanted to share that now. I also have another uh, video clip of the judge saying that a lot of time juries get it wrong. Have you guys seen this? This is the judge. Ah, do we have this video? Uh, yeah, the ju judge Arthur Engeron says that a lot of times juries get it wrong. Watch this. Here we go. Watch this. Now, I'm going to say something controversial. Even while I'm being taped, juries get it wrong a lot. That's my... He said... Juries get it wrong a lot. Ho uh ho. -huh. I wonder why he didn't have a jury in this one. Why was there no jury in this case? But there was one in E. Jean Carroll. And the E. Jean Carroll jury said that Trump was had to pay E. Jean Carroll $83.3 million. After the jury said, oh, he has to pay her $5 million. But now this judge is saying right up the street, oh, juries get it wrong a lot. My own opinion. I do only civil trials personal injury cases, contract disputes. But I've had situations where like, oh my, my heaven's sake, how could they have thought that? Well, I have a, um, I have a tool that I can deal with that. It's called jury notwithstanding the verdict, judgment notwithstanding the verdict. I can this say- This dude can't even talk, like he's like mixing up his words. A, there is no possible way that a reasonable jury would have reached that conclusion. And I've done that twice. And once I got reverse, and once I got affirmed. That's, that's not bad, considering it's sort of uh... That's 50-50, that's horrible. Now I wanted to read this. This is what Trump just said on his uh, social media platform going after the judge. Trump, again, laying it in to the judge, wanted to read this. He goes this. Judge Arthur Engeron is a rogue judge who was intimidated by the big, nasty, and ugly mouth of Letitia James. He spelled Letitia James' name wrong. That's actually hilarious by Trump. <laughs> Considered by many to be the worst attorney general in the U.S. She is a low IQ individual who campaigned for governor using my name and got trounced. She and her puppet Engeron, who valued Mar-a-Lago at $18 million when it is worth 50 to 100 times that amount, have destroyed all business prospects for New York State that is already dying or dead. But have no fear. When I become the 47th president, we will make New York great again. Yeah, actually, if Trump does end up getting elected, then I will uh, go back to visiting New York. I will, I will, I will. I really will, guys. Hold me accountable on that one. Um, yeah, Trump lawyer says, uh, uh, Alina Haba says this is complete injustice. Let's tune into this for a little bit. Trump, Alina, good to have you with us. Thank you for being here today. Um, Tell me a little bit about where you are in this process, because it, it, in terms of the appeals happening or the appeals court deciding, the appellate division deciding that perhaps they're going to make some modifications to this judgment. Right. Well, our argument in front of the appellate division is that forcing him to sell prized properties such as Trump Tower, iconic properties like 40 Wall Street, to pursue his appeal is manifest injustice. And it I also kind of have to agree that this is manifest injustice because why would you have to give up these properties just to be able to appeal? Don't you have the right to appeal in America? And if you're saying you're putting out all of these you know, crazy parameters in order to appeal, 
it kind of like goes against the whole right to appeal, right? Deprives him of that due process that we are all entitled to. So imagine you can't reverse selling off Trump Tower on a fire sale at a discounted price. We can't fix that if we win on an appeal. So it's complete injustice. And I love this woman, Alina Haba. Now, really quickly, I wanted to read this article. Who is Arthur Engeron? Judge Wing, future of Donald Trump empire is Ivy League educated ex taxi driver. So this man who is overseeing this, this judge, he is a former taxi driver. He's driven a taxi, played in a band, and protested the Vietnam War. Go figure. As a New York City judge, Arthur Engeron has resolved hundreds of disputes, deciding everything from zoning, free speech, to a custody fight over a dog named Stevie. I mean, this is literally his highlight reel, guys. The Associated Press, is this is his introduction. He's driven a taxi cab, played in a band. He's resolved hundreds of disputes. Zoning, free speech, custody fight over a dog named Stevie. And now all of a sudden he's catapulted to oversee this case with Trump's multi-billion dollar organization, the Trump organization with all these assets. I mean, I just do not understand this whatsoever. Trump says, I have a deranged Trump hating judge who railroaded this fake case through a New York state court at a speed never before seen. I mean, this is absolutely wild. Donald Trump is time after time raging at Judge Engeron after the courtroom. Uh, do we have video here? Oh, no, we don't. Judge uh, Trump lashed out on Judge Engeron again and again and again. Guys, I honestly do think that this is just a speed bump in, you know, the whole thing that's going down and I do think we're going to look back at this and say well hey it actually helped Trump because keep in mind this is bringing more eyes onto Trump and I think America is starting to see right through this garbage and I honestly do think that more and more people are starting to realize that hey look we actually you know are siding with Trump on this one I mean, look at this. This is Trump staring down the judge and the judge is like laughing. The judge is smiling. I mean, somebody brought, snuck a camera inside the courtroom and because there apparently there weren't supposed to be cameras in here. Look at the judge. Look at Trump, Letitia James, and look at the judge. He goes, hee hee. He's like, this is like a joke to him. So let me know your thoughts with this, with Judge Engeron. I'll talk to you soon. And make sure to subscribe because I will be posting updates on this soon. God bless. You guys are the best.